Yo, what's going on, you guys? Today, we're talking about a really interesting comic that I found. It's a crossover between Transformers and Mars Attacks. Now, I've never read any of the Mars Attacks comics before, but apparently this was a special one-shot from IDW back in 2013 as part of some kind of Mars Attacks event where they crossed over with Ghostbusters, Star Trek, G.I. Joe, and Transformers. I guess they just wanted to explore the idea of what would happen if you take the little Martians from Mars Attacks and insert them onto Earth during the war between the Anobots and the Decepticons, while also trying to keep intact some of the humor and chaos from the film. I'll admit that it's been a long time since I watched Mars Attacks, so I'm excited to get into this comic and break it down for you guys. So let's get to it. We start off with what seems to be the end of a massive clash between the Autobots and Decepticons. Optimus Prime overpowers Megatron, and it seems to bring their long-standing war to an end. The Decepticons are defeated and are hauled away by the American military, immobilized in stasis cuffs developed by Wheeljack, while Spike celebrates the Autobots' victory, only to be silenced by a stern general who critiques his choice of footwear. I promise this will make sense in a little bit. The general then approaches Prime, expressing his gratitude and confidently proclaiming that no one will dare challenge America now, just before he's disintegrated by a death ray from a sudden Martian invasion. Initially, Ironhide dismisses the small, big-headed aliens as trivial, but quickly reconsiders when their weapons blow his arm off. The Autobots just defeated the Decepticons, and they're not ready for another war, so they retreat to cover, and Bumblebee deciphers Martian transmissions demanding Earth surrender. Meanwhile, the Martians attack the convoy transporting the restrained Decepticons, freeing them from their stasis cuffs. Martian soldiers surround them. Megatron seizes this moment, offering to meet their leader, realizing the Martians had been waiting for the Transformers to weaken each other before invading. So he suggests they form an alliance, which the Martian leader accepts. While the Autobots are regathering their strength, they are shocked to find their old foes now allied with the invaders. But they leap into battle regardless only for the Martians to betray Megatron as well, trapping all the Transformers in a massive force field. Inside the force field, as the Martian assault intensifies outside, Megatron grudgingly agrees to Optimus Prime's plan, which gives a fun little back and forth between the two characters. They must join forces to escape and stop the Martians. Soundwave and Blaster have an idea, so they link up their systems and disable the force field through a powerful sonic attack. Together, the Autobots and Decepticons confront the Martian leader, who retaliates by shrinking Megatron to toy size. Megatron manages to kill the leader with his fusion cannon despite his tiny size, and Starscream sees Megatron's small size as an opportunity to seize power, which I've been waiting for for a really long time. Any time that Megatron had transformed into a gun, I'd always wondered why Starscream didn't just snap him in half. But to Starscream's surprise, Megatron pounces on him, scratching and clawing, causing Starscream to flee in panic. Soundwave chases after them, attempting to restore Megatron to normal size with the Martian device. As this uneasy alliance continues, Autobots and Decepticons aid each other in the ongoing battle, while the Insecticons prove their superiority over the Martian's giant ants, saving Ironhide and Jazz. Now remember when I brought up Spike's footwear and I said it would make sense later? That's because Spike finds himself surrounded by Martians and on the verge of being blasted, until a power pole knocked over in the chaos hits the flooded street, electrocuting the Martians but sparing Spike, thanks to the rubber boots the general was mocking earlier. Finally, the Martian ground forces are defeated, but their ships prepare for a devastating final strike. But up in the sky, Cosmos, disguised among the Martian fleet in his flying saucer form, launches a surprise assault, destroying the ships and sending the remaining Martians fleeing back to Mars. After this really weird battle, Prime thanks Megatron for the temporary alliance, but with a sly smile, Megatron assures the Autobots that he fully intends to resume their conflict once again. Now, before you read too much into it, I want to make it abundantly clear that this is not tied to any continuity within Transformers. It's not tied to a TV show. It's not tied to a movie. Heck, it's not even tied to another comic. It's quite literally 
just a fun one shot what if comic that explores what happens when you take characters from one franchise and another franchise and mash them together. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted to read this comic, because on one hand you've got the Transformers, and I already know a fair amount about them, so I kind of know what to expect. But on the other hand, you've got the Martians from Mars Attacks, and I don't know too much about them, except for what they show in the movie, and that's just that they're a dominating force that want to take over Earth, and they go, ah, 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 ah. Okay, that was terrible, but I never said that I was an impressionist, okay? My point is, is that I found it completely ironic that if the Earth is in trouble because it's about to get invaded by aliens, rather than looking to other humans or even the military to protect Earth, they look to giant robot aliens. But anyways, one of the things that I really loved about this comic was that they inserted a lot of the humor, both from Transformers and Mars Attacks, into the plot line. And one of my favorite moments was when Optimus and Megatron are in the force field and there's some banter back and forth about having to work together because Optimus is suggesting that they work together and Megatron's basically trying to shut him down. Like, don't, don't, I, I already know, don't say it. And I found that really comical because even with both factions threatened by these Martians, Megatron still can't bring himself to admit that Optimus might be right. Another moment that actually had me laughing out loud while I was reading it was when Starscream tries to take advantage of the situation once Megatron gets turned down into his like itty bitty size. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, man, it would just make sense if you just stepped on him right now. It could be all over. You could be the leader of the Decepticons. You'll get everything that you want. But no, Megatron still finds a way to fight him off. And even though he's super tiny. And I just thought that was really comical and kind of a throwback to some of the stuff that we might have seen back in like the first generation of Transformers. Now, seeing how this was just a one shot, you can get away with a lot of stuff creatively because there's no real ramifications for these characters outside of the comic. And so with that in mind, I feel like there was a missed opportunity, at least for the Martians from Mars Attacks. Because when I watched Mars Attacks, and albeit it was a long time ago, one of my favorite things was when they swapped Sarah Jessica Parker's head with her chihuahua. I thought that was hilarious. So I would have liked to see these strange experiments play a role within the story at some point. Maybe they just didn't have time, but I think it would have created a interesting dynamic had you say swapped heads with, you know, Optimus and Megatron and then had them try to deal with this ongoing threat from the Martians. Like could you imagine the amount of chaos that would have been unleashed had they swapped the heads of the leaders of the Autobots and Decepticons, not only would Optimus and Megatron be forced to try to figure out how to function in the middle of a war while they're defending Earth, but then they'd also be tasked with trying to figure out how are they going to get their heads back on their original bodies. I think that would have maybe allowed the Martians to just have a little bit more dog in the fight because the truth is... They didn't really stand a chance whatsoever going up against the Transformers. But hey, let me know what you guys thought about this weird crossover between Mars Attacks and Transformers. And also let me know in the comments if there's any crossovers you guys want me to cover in the future. I'll try my best to read them all. And in the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to sub to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.